Um, I would have said it was good going into today. You know, today's kind of like the today's kind of like the uh, line of demarcation. You know, sometimes in the military, like you know, in the Air Force, they have like a line where once they pass it, it means there's no turning back on the mission. Some guys get to that line, and and so we had some guys go down today with some soft tissue stuff. It looked like. Um, so you know, this is always sort of the day where you, where really the wear and tear of camp starts to begin to affect you, you know, as you're in the middle of the third week, uh, middle of the second, uh, third week, right? Yeah, third week. So, um, yeah, so we had a couple guys today, but I think overall pretty good. I mean, nothing long-term. Leslie Black uh, has had a, a small uh, fracture in his ankle that had to be a, a screw inserted into. Um, but other than that, you know, most of the stuff is stuff that's going to be manageable. Since we're talking to Donovan today, how, how would you uh, size up how that offense is coming together and, and, and building depth behind maybe some of those four or five, six guys you already know a lot about? Yeah, yeah. I think we have – I think the pleasant thing about the O-line is we have some depth of some guys who could challenge to play. So it's not just like, hey, these guys are going to be good players down the line. The guys, uh, the guys that are running with the twos and the threes, the days we do twos and threes, um, I think some of them are proven that if, if given an opportunity they could play. You know, offensive line is unique. Sometimes someone looks like a guard, but they really, when they play tackle, they are a natural fit and vice versa. Um, but I think there's healthy competition, and there's a lot of depth being built. The young players that have gotten here, they might not think they're good players yet, but they're, they're going to be really good players. Like, you know, Grant Bricks is doing a great job. Gibson Pyle, really pleased with him. Um, a lot of those guys. But uh, I think that's that, that tier of guys who've been here for a year uh, or two, I think they're pushing – the older guys. The older guys might not realize that, but as I see it, there's a bunch of guys I think could play. When you look at the quarterbacks, do you even think in terms of separation right now? Are you are you looking for separation? Um. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I'm always looking for. I mean, look, I'm always looking for separation, which means because that means one guy's doing a great job, and then usually what happens is the next guy catches him. You know, we're all. You know, he he realizes. Oh, I better pick it up. When you play with a great player, I'm not saying I'm not calling anyone a great player. I'm saying when you play with a great player or you play with someone who's doing things that you're not doing, it usually focuses, forces you then to catch up. So, like, the first day, um, you know, we have two freshman quarterbacks. Kind of a unique deal, right? Uh, it used to not be unique. But, um, you know, one guy comes out, flips the protection one day. The next guy, we, we have quarterbacks doing things in the protections that I haven't had someone do in 11 years, you know, in college football. Um, so it just kind of it kind of builds a new normal, if that makes sense, right? Like you're doing something at a high level, I catch you. So, yeah, you know, I, I my job is to make sure that all the quarterbacks, all three and all five, um, we're not not here to pick the starter. We're trying to make them all good enough to be the starter. We're trying to get them as good as possible. But separation shows that someone's achieving, and usually when you point it out, other guys you know start to follow. Because you have those two guys who were both unique as early enrollees and playing the same position. Um, what do you, what do you, do you see anything about the dynamic between those two that's changed, that's evolved, that where, where they've, you know, pushed each other, kind of like what you're, what you're suggesting there? How, how does it work between Dan and Danny and Dylan? The way I'm able to see it because of my role is really just more in the play with things I see happening. You know, with any, within any offensive pass play, it, it, you know, you can draw we, – we, we run the same play that maybe the Los Angeles Rams run that someone else runs. And really, it just comes down to the intricacy of the things the quarterback's able to take advantage of. Whereas some people might just say, hey, throw it to him. If he's not open, throw it to him. If he's not open, throw it to him. As you get more evolved, it's like, well, if they give you this coverage, you also have this out here. And oh, if you see one-on-one, -on -one, you can go back here. And, hey, if they show you this blitz, protect yourself this way. So – Really, it's it's in the evolution of what the players can handle as you kind of scaffold your teaching, right? Okay, they know they mastered this. Let's teach the next thing. They've mastered this. What happens? I truly believe in that scaffolding process, right? As you as you're taking your time to teach them the next thing, um, when you have one player doing something here, the next player quickly catches up. As I said to you guys, players learn from players way more than they learn from us. Um, so, so that's what I see. I see both guys doing things at a really really high level. But they're taking advantage of the things within our offense that maybe haven't been taken advantage of as of yet. And I think all three guys are doing that. And so that's been, um, that's been the really good thing, you know. Um, today's going to be, as I told them out there on the field, today's going to be a day. What, what's happening to us, and it's, it's part of culture now, right? You know, like everyone's, everyone's waiting at home for, the, for us to put out something from practice today because they want to see the highlights. 
the highlights haven't been the reason why we haven't been to a bowl game in the last six years. It's the lowlights. And so I'm more of a, hey, what are the defects, eliminate the defects type of a coach. And so, yeah, we have some unbelievable wow plays. But let's talk about the amount of sacks we're giving up or the big plays we're giving up or the missed assignments that we have or the missed, missed opportunities in two minutes. So also making sure that we're coaching the what not to do and what to avoid, um, that's, that's really the step for the quarterbacks because both guys can make dynamic plays. But our season will be dependent upon how many times we beat ourselves on a play and how many times we don't. And that's, that's really what you worry about with freshman quarterbacks or what you have to teach for freshman quarterbacks. How is the protection so far for the, the three quarterbacks from the line? I think it's been good. I think it's been really good. I mean, we've had a lot of protection errors at the running back position early on um, with just, you know, guys who haven't really played playing. I mean, Tony, Tony brings – I mean, if you can learn protection versus this group, you know, some, team, you know, some teams that you face in the season are not going to be quite as much. Um, you know, we don't play Michigan this year, but, like, you know, Wink Martindale's the defensive coordinator of Michigan, a man whom I truly respect. And we played him in the NFL and was like, all right, guys, if we can pick up blitzes this week, we should be good the rest of the year because they just challenge you in every way. They're challenging us with uh, all the pressures, and so sometimes they get home, sometimes we make mistakes. In terms of the pure just a one-on-one pass pro technique, I- I'd say we've gotten significantly better. And um, you have to – when you have Danny and Dylan in – you're protecting with a little different mindset than when you have Heinrich in, like last year when we had like a Chubb or a Jeff, guys who would, you know, we're almost hoping to create some sort of interior seam. We're hoping that they come underneath and get them outside, let them see the field and run. These these quarterbacks are elite at moving within the pocket, stepping up. So we truly want to build like an NFL cup style protection where we're never getting beat inside out and trusting that the quarterback versus an edge rusher will step up. And so... Uh, the defense doesn't like me very much sometimes because they're coming off the edge and yelling sack, and I'm laughing like, yeah, right. Um, but but I think all these little, little nuances are really important as we put together this year's team. Uh, the second-tier players that are pushing the first team. Um, you guys have been running with the second team. You know, Mike, Mike has been running with the second team. Tyler Canox has been, you know, done, done a great job. Um, uh, you know, Justin Justin Evans, you know, he while well, he's starting at guard, also goes in sometimes at center. And does a fantastic job. You know, Canucks got a guy I've been really pleased with just watching him sort of uh, move around. Um, Lutowski, while he, he might be running with the ones at guard, when he goes out to tackle, I think he does a fantastic job. And so, um, you know, Mashake Shack was doing a great job. He's got a little banged up. Hopefully, he'll be back here soon. Uh, Ruquan um, making the transition, still learning all the nuances. But once it's all figured out, I think he's going to be really a good player. So, Probably missing some guys there. I don't mean to, but I just think that whole group of those guys, um, and any of them at any point, I think could walk in and and probably play and play really well. That guy and he's playing guard. Yeah, and, and, and does Bricks does Bricks fit there too? And and then do you like eventually see him being somebody who will go out and play tackle or? Yeah, Grant's play? playing tackle right now. You know, I think anytime anytime you recruit a tackle, you try to play him at tackle. It's harder to find tackles than guards. Um, you know, sometimes you can go over, take the D lineman that's struggling, and move them to guard, and all of a sudden they're a great player. It's just, tackle's a whole different animal. So, uh, Grant to me has a bright, bright, bright future at tackle. He can play tackle at this level. Um, he's uh, put on a lot of good weight since he's gotten here. He's extremely conscientious, straight A student. Going to be, you know, do everything right on the football field. It's just he just needs reps. Hey Matt, uh, you had mentioned Tony a minute ago. Uh, big picture question on him. Um, uh, I, you've, you've spoken about encouraging guys to get head coaching jobs. Uh, on the flip side of that, uh, he did stay, and he's he's here. Uh, I guess to continue to build on what you guys started defensively last year with the improvement. I guess how big was that that, that he's still around? Yeah, well, I think anytime we can have consistency on the coaching staff, we're excited. You know, when you think about it, you know, we did make the move adding Glenn. You know. Uh, to be the quarterbacks moving sap, but we still kept Josh here. And so being able to maintain the, the, the coaches that the players have relationships with, I think is vital. Um, player, you know, the men that they can trust and consistency in teaching. You know, no matter who you are, you're going to add a different wrinkle when you coach a position. So having Tony here, um, I think it's been great. You know, behind Tony, obviously, you, you know, you have Coop, you have T-Knight, you have Rob. 
But just as importantly, you know, we have Kevin McGarry, who's a longtime head coach, senior defensive analyst, you know, been in that system. Um, Jack Potenza has been taking the Jacks uh, as a graduate assistant. He's ready to be a position coach. He's been taking them one-on-one, -on -one, and I think the play of the Jack position, I think Chief Borders is doing a fantastic job this camp. Uh, I think MJ's really coming on. You see McGay, he's as a freshman, and it's because I think we've given them to Jack and let him just kind of coach them. Um, Josh Bringwell's been in the system. He played in the system. So you have all these guys who've kind of been in that, that system. We took, uh, you know, Chevin as a graduate assistant. He's been with Coop before. And then we took Adam from offense and moved him over to defense. Uh, I truly believe uh, Adam, Adam's really a bright young coach. I, I think coaching on both sides of the ball really helps you. Um, it's one of the things that I did as a young coach is that I've coached on both sides of the ball. And I think he, he brings something to the defensive staff as they break down opponents that's vital. So fired up to have Tony back. Um, you know, I want everyone to have a chance to be a head coach, mainly so they can call me and be like, oh, you were right. I'm sorry I complained all the time, Matt, you know, <laughs> how hard it is. Uh, but, you know, Tony will have his chance. How much have you been able to talk with Troy Dannon since he's been here and just your early relationship? How's it going? Just kind of talking about some of the needs and wants moving forward in the athletic department. Yeah, Troy Troy's, uh, Troy's comes down every day. You know, I've seen him every day. We've gone out to dinner a couple times. He, you know, um, you know, I've, I've had a long history, not professional, but, you know, just kind of semi, semi-professional and personal with Troy. Um, I think the big thing with Troy is, you know, when you've, when you've, when you've seen it, you know, when you've, when you've, when you've, when you've seen it at the highest of levels, right, when you've been to a team that just won the national championship, when you've been to a team in the group of five that's gone to those high levels, you know what it's supposed to look like, you know, so, um, if maybe I come in and I say, hey, we really need this, you know, he has a perspective of I, I know why we need this because everyone else has this. And so some, maybe some of the requests I make, I make a lot of requests, <laughs> maybe some of the requests I make uh, don't seem quite as you know, crazy to him because he's been, seen a lot of people, been around a lot of things. But I think everything's gotten off to a good start. You know, you know he's, he's not just here for me, he's here for all the sports. And I'm, so, I'm sure he's trying to you know, make his way around and get to know all the coaches and all the staff. But... Um, uh, I, I'm really pleased with everything so far with Troy. Speaking of uh, doing things at a high level, you and Don Staley overlapped at Temple. Um, did you have any interaction with her back then? And just <coughs> the early days of now what she's been able to do at Temple? Yeah, you know, when I got to Temple as an assistant coach, I mean, uh, Co Coach Cheney was the head, head men's coach and Don was the head women's coach. You talk about, you know, two Hall of Famers. Uh, I don't know Coach – I don't know Don – you know, very at all. Um, she, you know, I was an assistant. I was just working. Um, other than I watch everything she talks about. You know, I'm one of those coaches. I go listen to other coaches. You know? So I, I listen to, you know, Kara Lawson. You know, I listen to her. I listen to, I listen to, you know, I love, I've been listening to Coach Hurley, Danny Hurley a lot recently, you know, and kind of the way he's building his team. So I love to listen to other coaches. And I think what she's done there is absolutely phenomenal. I'm a huge fan. She represents North Philly and Temple and uh, many other places in an unbelievable way. Last spring, you look at John Bullock. He goes from walk-on defensive back to now he's starting linebacker with a prestigious, you know, single-digit number. Are there any guys, and I know it might be a little bit early, but are there any guys who are kind of following in his footsteps this spring? That's a great question. I don't know that. I, gosh, I hate when I, I hate when I, I afterwards I'll be like, I should have said this. Um, I think we have a lot of guys doing really, really good things. Um, I don't know that I can answer that. You know, I, I, um, I think we have a lot of guys doing really, really, really special things right now. And a, a, a lot of our uh, non-scholarship players, I think, are playing at a high level. I, I can't think of anyone. You know, I've talked about Maurice Mazuka a little bit, um, but you know, I can't think of anybody that's not making that move. Do you think his evolution has kind of inspired like like guys on your team to be like, okay, look at what John did. Now I can, you know, I can do that. Well, it, it eerily goes back to the conversation about how the two quarterbacks are affecting each other, right? Like, you know, this year we'll have some guys go in the draft, right? Um, maybe someone will get drafted. Maybe they won't. I'm hoping some guys get drafted. Um, next year, let's say we have three, four, five, six, seven guys drafted. As a young player, when I practice every day against somebody and they're within my realm of potential and I watch them get drafted, it becomes much more possible for me to get drafted, if that makes sense. Um, when I'm a non-scholarship player and I see other non-scholarship players bust their tail, wait for their turn, keep grinding, not complain, just just fight, and eventually get rewarded, it tells me that, hey, that's possible, and then I ha now have a blueprint for what to do. 
And so I, I think I think both of those things are possible. It's, it's just like, you know, there, there, there's been players in the state sometimes in recruiting that some of the staff, recruiting staff's like, well, I mean, he's a, I'll say, well, let's watch the film. He's good enough, right? He's a scholarship player. We, we, we evaluate them off the film. We have a film evaluation. And they'll say, well, he's a, he's a four, and, which means we think he'll be a multiple-year starter. And I'll say, well, then we should offer him a scholarship. They're like, well, I think maybe we can get him as a walk-on. I'm like, well, if all we do is offer players in the state of Nebraska walk-on opportunities, then every guy's going to grow up waiting to be a, dreaming of getting a walk-on opportunity. If we offer player scholarships, then guys have the dream of well, I can, maybe I could be a scholarship player. And we have some other guys you know, coming in as, as walk-ons too. So I just think it's really important that if you, you know, if you show the players, hey, if you're a non-scholarship player, a walk-on, someday you'll do this. Hey, if you follow our process, someday you'll get drafted. Hey, if you come to our camps and you're a good player, we're going to offer you. They start to see that's possible, and then that's within their realm of possibility, if that makes sense. I remember last year a lot of optimism around the running backs, saying it's a really good group. Um, at this moment, with the injuries and maybe some of the experience, inexperience, how do you feel about that group of players, and how far do you want them to come in the next two and a half weeks? Yeah, I think it's one of those deals where it's really going to be about the fall. Um, you know, I mean, I've seen what Ramirez can do. And what I have to make the staff do is go back and watch the 21 Michigan game sometimes to see him when he was like the feature back. I don't know why he wasn't the feature back in 22, but he wasn't, so it was hard to see. Sometimes you can look at a guy like that like, oh, we should play him here, and you give him this limited role. Like Ramirez was, t- you know, lining up and taking outside zones against Michigan and, and, and slicing and dicing. I've seen Gabe at his best. Um you know, I think uh, I think you know we saw Emmett evolving into a guy that could take games over. You know, when you look at the run he had at Purdue, you look at the run he had at the end of the game to set us up. I, I can't remember Maryland, Wisconsin. He, they had to run in both games to set us up on the last drive. He's get kind of re- getting ready to bust out. I'm a big fan of Ives. Since if you guys go look at it, every time I've talked about Quentin Ives, I believe he can be this, right? I believe he can be this. He um, so this is a big camp for him. You know, whereas Emmett's trying to take the step into dominant player, Quentin's trying to take the step into, hey, I'm going to be here every day, know what to do, be healthy. And then uh, Dante's in the same boat, right? Dante's trying to take the step into every down back. But the, the things I see that are positive are really positive. Um, but I, I think a lot of that's going to come to fruition in the, in the fall. If you're a team to me that has just one back that you play and he has 25-plus carries, A, you're not doing right by him because he's going to be all beat up when it's his chance to go to the NFL. I mean, we've always wanted to have a 20-carry back and a 12-carry back and then a third. You know, we want to play three guys. And we certainly look like we have enough guys to do that. Did you have something to do? Oh, yeah. I mean, is it? I see one before I walk in here. I tell Keith, make sure this is quick. And then he does that. Then I say anybody else so that you guys think I'm a good guy, even though some of you guys know I'm not really. So it's just a little – he's the bad guy. He's the nicest guy I know, but he's still the bad guy. So if anybody has anything, I'm happy to answer it. In the grand scheme, I think you, you would have a scrimmage Saturday this Saturday. And it, what's the level of importance in your mind? Um, it's just an assessment for where we are right now, right? Um, you know, I, I told the players before practice, they, a, lot, a lot of them think in terms of spots. Like, oh, I got my spot. No, I don't think about – honestly, I, I don't ever really believe you know – until the guy's played for you for a couple of years, you really don't know who your starters are until, like, after game two sometimes. Like – you think someone's a starter, then you see them play and it's a little too big for them, or you see someone play and they're just so comfortable. So I don't really think in terms of spots. I think in terms of, like, development. And to me, there's, like, there's like this line, okay, hey, he's good enough to win with. And so if you're above that line, you're going to play, right? Some weeks, I mean, in the big, we're, we're in the Big Ten. We're playing in weather. We're playing on turf. Guys are going to get beat up. So you better have, you know, not just three defensive line starters. You better have about five or six. So I'm just trying to see where I, you know, kind of, where, assess where they are right now. A big thing for me is, are they at the right position? You know, what are their opportunities they should get moving forward? But um, this is by no means like a, hey, you know, this decides anything. Um, this is just a statement for where they're, because I really do believe in, like, I come out and I, I, I think I'm gonna probably play like at this level and I play at this level and the guy I'm competing with plays at this level. Great. Now let's see what your behavior's like the next week, right? Like if you, that's, you know, parents, we mess that up all the time. I mess that up as my kids, you know, like they need adversity to spur them on, you know, to drive them. And so, um, so yeah, I, I kind of look at this as like a ping pong match. You have like the scrimmage one, then you have scrimmage two, then you have kind of that, that, that spring game, which, you know, the spring game can be, you know, this year, last year we kind of ran everything. This year I'm sure it'll be a little more vanilla. Um, but um, in terms of what we run for, for many reasons, but, um, you still get to see who can block and tackle and all those different things. So, um, 
It'll be important. And it won't, we won't only scrimmage. We'll practice some, too, and then we'll scrimmage some, too. So we really have to take a lot of time to work on our end-of-game two-minute situations with the way the league runs, with our recent history, but also with, with uh, you know, really a sophomore quarterback in Heinrich who, you know, who's only played one year and two young quarterbacks and young receivers that we need a ton of the two-minute reps. So we'll probably rep a lot of those situations first, and then when they're tired – Go live and you know tackle and see if we can tackle and block. Sure. This is my last one. <laughs> so we're nearing the end of the COVID year, guys. How have you seen that from you know being here the last two years affect the game, but also from your perspective as an NFL coach, how did that affect how like the draft process with those guys getting extra years and what is that that domino effect kind of? Like? Yeah, it's been unique, you know. Um, you know, I wasn't able to stay around in the NFL long enough to see many of the COVID year guys, but um, I think it's just been unique. And like you know, you have six year guys. I think you know, with all the with all the portal movement, you know, a lot of guys have benefited academically from. Hey, I have a six year. Like I think when when that's gone, we'll, you know, transferring a bunch. How that's going to affect graduation is going to be interesting to see. But by and large, after going through it and being around guys, you know, that have taken advantage of the COVID year, I think it was a good thing. You know, I think it was um, a good thing for them. You know, they, the, a lot of their development was stunted. A lot of their recruiting was stunted because they didn't have a chance to lift and work out. So um, one thing I did notice was that first year after the portal year, I think um, – I can't remember how that went down. Well, anyway, that first year, like I think we coached the Senior Bowl that year, and the players looked all, like, smaller to me. They looked under – well, then you, then you started realizing, like, they had gone a year of no training table. They had gone a year of no lifting. They had gone a year of – and um, – well, I think a lot of people think we lift and eat and try to get these guys big and strong for performance. We do. It's also for health and, you know, injury. So I think the COVID year has been good um, as we come to the end of it. I think it's great. You know, I don't think it's great when you have 26-year-old people and 25-year-old people playing against 18-year-old people, 17-year-old um, people sometimes. So I think as we come to an end of it, keeping football to four and five years is probably the healthiest thing for the game and for health and wel welfare. But, you know, our kids suffered. All of our kids suffered during COVID. I think nationally, sometimes some people don't realize as much because they were maybe in a place that didn't shut down. Like, you know, my kids were in school for out of school for a year and a half. Some places in the Northeast for close to two years. So, you know, in the end, it's probably the best thing. But it'll be it'll be uh, managing the roster has been really unique, right? Like, okay, he has a COVID year, he doesn't have a COVID year, and just trying to trying to uh, handle that's been a challenge. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. On paper, you guys have one of the more experienced lines in the country. I mean, just with the reps and the starts you bring back. I mean, what do you like about just that experience that you have to work with right now? Um, you know, first off, I'm just so grateful to be a part part of this, uh, you know, unit uh, with all the experience. Um, with all that experience, you know, I think they do a great job of helping the young guys understand the technique, understand the scheme, understand the standards that we expect. So, um, you know, um, it's just – you know, great to be a part of. How have you seen the, the younger guys from last year, like the early enrollees and the second year guys, like take this step this spring to move forward? Yeah, you see them um, each day improving, you know, taking steps, um, you know, focusing on what they're improving that day. Each day, we, you know, they give us 
one thing they're going to improve in the run game, one thing in pass pro, and, and they work at it. And um, it's a, uh, you know, it's up and down. I mean, it's you know, every every rep is you know something happen, something different happens, but you see them improve, 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 and that's what you're after right at the end of the day. So, How valuable to a guy like Justin Evans, who and he went in at center for you for at least a snap last year, and I know he's worked some there this spring. Just that he can play both those spots. Yeah, you know. The, um, Thing about Justin is he's 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 a tough guy, you know. He he um, and he's very like in tune with understanding what we're trying to get done. And uh, you know, everyone looks at him like oh, he's this big, this 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 and this. But he's way bigger than how he looks, the way he plays, um, the standard he holds himself to, um, and just being a part of the unit. You know, he does a great job. But his biggest attribute is his toughness, and I love that. You kind of you kind of do that against um, Tony White's defense. Kind of helped, helped. Oh, it's the best. I love it. <laughs> is it you know can you expand on that a little bit more like why why like where are the benefits where are the negatives about that um you know it's just it keeps you on your toes you, you kind of knew that about evan jenkins when you recruited him remember you said justin things, evans yes sir yeah yeah that, that he that he was you know he was tough how, how did you gauge that um, when you were recruiting him? Because you got here and you kind of had to figure that out pretty quickly. Um, you know, there's ways to uh, uh, study that when you study a high school film. Um, you know, just in general, uh, if you see an offense alignment on film hitting people, like not turning away or like looking blocks in and they're willing to hit people, to me that shows a sign of toughness, you know. So um, that's what you look for. And then uh, obviously if you play hard and then, you know, here's a wrestler and all those different things. So um, those are some things that you, you study on film biggest step you've seen Teddy or that he can take with a full runway into the season with you know being out there uh, just the reps you know improving with reps having a whole offseason lifting you know it's still a work in progress but just getting him stronger and stronger and stronger and being able to uh, uh, understand like the rigors of playing that position right so and everything in general with the offensive line position so Mizuka's camp been like how have you seen him Oh, evolve and progress in this program. Uh, Mike is improving every day. Um, you know he's, uh, you know, um, taking to the standard well. Uh, he's fitting in with the guys, and uh, you just see improvements every day. He's a, obviously a. Uh, you know, experienced guy that's played a lot of games, um, but you just see him, you know, working at things that we're working on, right? Because you come from a different place and different, you know, uh, uh, techniques, and we do things a little different here. So, you know, he's he's actually really taking to it, and he's improving every day, which is awesome to see. It's another year in this program for Ben Scott and for Bryce Benhart, who, who both could have could have left um, and played the next level, probably. What what can it do for those? Are there things that relate to both of them that, that being here for another year can can do? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the communication piece, um, you know, understanding how, how I like we teach them to see the game and then taking taking it upon themselves. Right. Obviously, the center for us, we put a lot on their plate. They're, they're, they're the quarterback of the offensive line. And then uh, Bryce, everything slows down every every day. It slows down and slows down for him. And the technique is improving each day with them. You know, um, obviously Ben coming from somewhere else and Bryce having different techniques when I first got here. And it takes time, you know, the, the way we do things. And uh, it's, it's kind of unconventional. So um, you see improvements with that every day. With the uh, spring set up, you know, three teams, three fields, has that been beneficial for you to see, you know, a lot of reps for some of those younger guys? You know, has that been a good evaluation tool? Absolutely. Um, you know, you learn how to play, play football by playing football. So uh, getting live reps against defensive guys. And, you know, the thing about playing offensive line is like the, the one, like, you know, other positions, but it's the position you got to figure it out sometimes, right? And figure it out together and figure it out with one set of eyes. So, um, you know, that's, that's, you can't take that away from all those reps that they're getting. What kind of uh, improvement have you seen from Gunnar Gatua after being here early last year as an uh, early enrollee? Uh, Gunnar's doing a great job. Uh, he, you know, he's gotten stronger, um, mo more mobile with uh, uh, our great strength staff. And, and uh, you know, you see his body changing with the uh, type of nutrition staff we got with Miss Kristen. And then uh, just the understanding of what we expect and the, the standard of uh, outworking your def uh, uh, opponent and uh, the technique that he's uh, um, playing with is, is got getting better each day. So um, very, very, very uh, proud of Gunner, how, how hard he worked to, you know, just keep improving. So. What specifically would you look for on Saturday when you guys go through some live scrimmaging? Um, just figuring out solutions to what's going on out there, you know, seeing, seeing, um, you know, seeing if we can uh, uh, 
you know, zero penetration in the run game. We talk about if we give the, the backs the line of scrimmage, we may have a good play, you know, and then uh, obviously protecting the quarterback. So, uh, and then you go out there and the, it's like a game, right? So they got to figure things out by themselves, right? It's not scripted. So, you know, understanding situations, right? What's the situation? And, uh, you know, just going out there and playing together. Help out, even though he's in the green jersey right now. Yeah, turned. Um, uh, could, could he? Could he be a guard tackler when he gets back? Or, yeah. or, or what are you? What are you thinking? Of? Yeah, Turner. Turner can play any position. I think. Um, he. He. But Turner, Teddy, uh, uh, Bryce. Uh, ben, like all the veteran guys, Justin, I mean, Micah, you can see Micah out there. They all help the young guys, and that's the kind of culture you want to build. And now, you know, the room kind of runs itself, right? And and that's what you want to get to, that point where, um, you know, you we ex we understand the expectations and they understand it as well, and then they're taking it upon themselves, right? Because um, it's all about the team first, right? And then, the, then their teammates and then self last, so. so go ahead. What's it like for you to be on the field and see Dylan do his thing? It's got to be the, a, a, the first time it's, that you've been in this position as his uncle to watch him operate from that close up. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you know, family's everything for us, right? And uh, um, just seeing him and uh, how's he, how he's, um, you know, becoming part of the team and understanding the standard and uh, understanding the expectations every day. And uh, not only Dylan, you watch Danny do it, you watch Heinrich do it, you watch Luke Longval do it, you know, Jack Walkie, all those quarterbacks work really hard. So, um, it's, but, you know, for, for us, you know, it's a, a comfort level, you know. How much you talk? Like protection with Dylan. Like Whenever we can, you know, that's the only thing that I really know that I can help him with. So, uh, you know, if, if he has questions, he'll ask, you know, and, you know, and any of those quarterbacks, we'll talk protections with him and, and help him out in that way. So. What made Lucon a nice candidate to switch over to the offensive line last season and fully go here this spring? Yeah, Rue's, uh, Rue's really, really uh, working hard at, um, you know, learning the plays and then learning, obviously, the technique that that is expected of them. So each day you see him, you know, get better and better and better and better. So uh, that's exciting. You know, he's a he's a he's a willing guy, man. He's a he's a team guy. Uh, love everything about Ruquan Buckley. Which guy are you most or guys are you most pleased with right now? All of them. Anything else? <laughs> You said you, the way that you teach things is a little bit un unconventional. What do you mean by that? I mean, what what makes the way you do things more unique than maybe other places? Um, the biggest thing is we block with our knuckles up. We don't grab people, right? Because um, holding encourages lazy blocking. So we don't we don't teach holding. Um, we don't teach grabbing people. We block with our knuckles up. So that's the biggest thing, right? Where you go around most places, I'm not sure how they do it, but that's how we do it here. So. Good. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Thank guys.
out. I'm getting it snuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, I had to take it out there. Sir. I tried to get out. Too late. All right, brushes for Ben. Ben, what's uh, what stuck out to you about those young quarterbacks and even Heinrich is, you know, working with them as, as you work through things this spring? Yeah, I think they look. They all look really good. I think, especially compared to last spring, I think we're miles ahead of where where we were last spring. And I think uh, Coach GT is doing a good job with with them working out and all that stuff. And especially like just like the little stuff, like even the quarterbacks are learning like about the protections and stuff. So I think that's like taking a big jump of from last spring to this spring. I think it's going good. For you personally, what can one more year of college football do for you? I think it can do a lot. I think um, there's so much to build off of from last year. And I think that, um, you know, I'm just trying to work on my game, work on my weaknesses. And just like everyone else, you know, just get one better every day. Now that you're kind of a few months behind you, uh, what would you learn your first year in the Big Ten? Like, how was it different, if, if at all, from the Pac-12? You know, Coach Raiola teaches uh, O-line a lot different than everyone else. You know, I've been, I played for multiple O-line coaches, and I think Coach Raiola teaches it the right, the right way. And it was, it was a little difficult to get used to, you know, and I think now that I'm really bought into it and really focusing on, like, what I need to work on, and he's doing a great job of helping me out and showing me, like, what I need to work on and, uh, and what I need to focus on. And I think it's doing good that I'm focusing on it now in the spring. And once fall rolls around, I'll be good to go. What part of his, part of his um, way that he teaches it made, that, made it difficult for you to, to transition into this? He was the center himself, and, you know, he really puts a lot on the centers to uh, make the points, make the calls, and um, seeing the defense, he calls it the, the sixth sense. And uh, I think it's good that, like, uh, we're going against our defense, and you have to see a lot to go against our defense, and they're always running games, and Coach T. White's always trying to figure out ways to attack an offense. So I think it's good to focus on that. And, uh, you know, the technique is um, – his technique is a lot different than a lot of coaches teach, so I think that's good for us to focus on and get better at. How do you see it when, when transfers come in, like Micah? Is it an adjustment? You can tell it's an adjustment for them, too, to learn this style. I mean, it's an adjustment for sure, but it's like once it clicks, like like you can tell that Micah, like he, he's buying into it, and you can see like when Coach uh, Raiola is teaching him a technique, it, like when it clicks, he's like, oh, that makes so much sense, and he's like, then he goes out there and dominates, you know. And it's just like you just got to get it to click, and then we're going out there balling. What about these young quarterbacks? I mean, you're are you a six year, right? Mm -hmm. You just having high, guys that should still be in high school leading your huddle. What, what's that been like for you um, and, and the offensive linemen who are a lot of veterans on this team? You know, I think they're they're doing a great job preparing every practice and going in the film room. And you know, we're not treating them like freshmen. I mean, they're in college now. Like you have to be treated like everyone else. We're just holding everyone to a standard and. Um, I think they're doing a great job. All, all three of them are out there, and uh, they're controlling the offense. And you know, a lot of us veteran guys are trying to help out. You know, like with the procedure stuff and all that. So I think we're just going out there and doing a great job. Speaking of veteran guys helping Turner, he can't be out there right now. But how have you seen him <coughs> be this like player coach, uh, especially for the young guys? Oh, it's nice. You know, especially with the the early enrollees coming in, he's always helping out. He's watching the tackles feet and their punch and all that. And he's really keen on like the little details for them, which helps out a lot. Like um, instead of like waiting for like the film room sessions after practice, he can coach it right then and there so they can go in the next drill and work on that too. So I think it helps out a lot having those guys back there, um, coaching the guys as it as it's happening. You, you and Bryce both having decisions to make after last season about whether you would you know, come back for another senior year. Um, did you guys communicate at all? I mean, did he, did his decision uh, factor at all in, in you wanting to be to be a part of this again? Oh, most definitely. You know, a lot of those guys, like, we would talk to each other, and it's like we were building so, so much last season, and now, like, we just have to build on it even more. It's like with all those guys coming back, I think we have a lot to work with, and I think the sky's the limit for us. Can you feel those? kind of second year guys in the program who were true freshmen last year in your room starting to push and, you know, add to that depth that you want. Yeah, I think it's great having them, um, especially like the guys that came in the fall last year. It's their first spring ball, but they've already went through the season. So 
you know, seeing them take that jump is tremendous, you know, uh, especially having uh, Sam Sledge behind me. You know, he's always working, trying to uh, do, like, center stuff, and we're always working on, like, snaps and, like, our steps and stuff, so it's really good. Sam, you know, like, since you're at the same spot as him, what, what kind of jumps out traits-wise with him? Oh, you know, he's he's a, he's a smart guy, and he's always – he's – he can get ferocious, you know, and like you, you like that about a guy when he like flips that switch and he goes out there and puts someone on their back. You know, you like to see that. What have you seen from somebody like Justin Evans who, you know, plays a little guard can go at center? Just what, what have you kind of seen from him this spring? Yeah, you know, mentally that that's hard to go from guard to center. You're like, it kind of screws up your mind a little bit, but it's good that he can be versatile and guard and center. And, you know, he goes out there and does his thing. You know, you've seen him go in the games and it's like having him missed a beat. So having a guy like that, that can go in there and play good, you know, you always love that. Anything else for Ben? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hey Bryce, for you, was it a tough decision at all to come back for a six year? Did you, or what did you know all along that you had unfinished business for this year? I mean, yeah, there was, there was a lot of unfinished business. I mean, it took me a while. I mean, talked to my family, talked to my close ones, talked to this Don or Coach Raiola, and then Rule Two a lot. You know, just try to figure it out what's the best option. And I figured coming back here would help me and then especially just not help myself but help the team and I want to be a part of that next step for the team. The jump you made last year, I mean, what would you attribute it to? Just being more comfortable out there and coaching? Just, I mean, the coaching is always going to be the same from Donnie. He's, 
the best for us. I mean, he perfects, he wants us to, or demands perfection out of us. I mean, he's the coach that you want. I mean, rules pushing everyone. I mean, we have great guys on the team that push you on defense too. I mean, and then even in the old line room, we're pushing each other to get better. We're competing for everything. How has this spring so far been a benefit to you in terms of you reaching your next goal? I mean, I'm just working on the same stuff as last year, just trying to perfect my craft. What does the, the spring lead uh, do for that in terms of just like adding all those extra reps? I mean, it's just more competition. I mean, you get to see guys play and see wide receivers make big catches and O-line, we're protecting our, hats, our butts off for the, our quarterbacks. And I mean, it's what you want, competition. Hey Bryce, when you think about the, the O-line history at this place and, and then the knowledge that you've started as many games as any offensive lineman in, in, this, in the history of this program as you go into a, another full year, mm -hmm. um, what, what, what's that like for you to comprehend? I mean, it's... It's pretty crazy, honestly. I mean, I wouldn't, coming in my freshman year, I wouldn't really expect to have these, to have this title of coming in and next thing you know that you're gonna have the most starts in Nebraska history. I mean, it's pretty cool to have your name up next to the greats of Nebraska, especially on the offensive line. Coach Rule mentioned uh, Grant Bricks working at tackle mm -hmm. just uh i'm sure you want to help those guys along yeah. in the future what, what have you seen out of him just i know it's early for him but how it's going he's excited every day I'll tell you that much he's eager to learn really eager to learn he's i mean coming from a small school he's he's learning really well he's doing really well uh, i mean i'm teaching him as much as i can and helping him out as much as i can but he's excited about this his opportunity here and He's grown every day. How have you seen Turner help be that player coach for them too, since he can't necessarily be out there with you guys? Oh, he's, he's if he's he's always there helping out, coaching. I mean, he's coaching everyone up. He's even coaching me up, which is great to have another old head talk to me too about it and see what I don't see. I mean, it's it's a great thing to have him too. Seem like sponges from what we've been told. Can you can you tell how much they're into just like learning all the parts of the path pro and we're working, in, you know, having that chemistry with you guys? Oh yeah, I mean, they're always they're in the film room. I when I walk past, they're they're in there learning everything. They wanna, they hang around us. I mean, they want they they all want to be great. The room feels pretty confident, right? Like mm -hmm. I mean, it should be at this point. Yeah. Um, when you think about okay, what's the next thing for you guys? What do you what do you want to get better at? I mean, just taking Figuring that next step. step. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what it is. You just got to grow each day, taking the next step each day. What kind of a bond is there as a couple of twenty three year olds between you and and Ben Scott? <laughs> it's a good one. I mean, it's great to. I mean, for us being the old heads, we know what we're talking about. I mean, we joke around. I mean, we're helping out. All the young guys doing what we can. Did you guys communicate much at all in December as you know you thought about what your future was going to be and made those decisions to come back for six seasons? Yeah, we talked to each other a little bit. We talked to each other. We, bounced, we both just sat down and talked and figured out what was best. How about these young quarterbacks? I mean, they should still be in high school. I mean, do they, do they feel like guys that still be in high school the way they've been able to kind of command and operate already? I mean, they're, they're stepping, stepping up, up right away. I mean, they have no fear. They're they're just attacking, which is what you want to see, confidence. Thanks, Bryce. Thank you. Yep.